Welcome back. Even as President Trump claims falsely that polls show him ahead in battleground states, and even as he predicts he'll be victorious next Tuesday and warns that the only way he'll lose is, is through massive fraud, it has also become apparent that losing is very much on his mind these days. Take a listen to this uh, montage from his rallies. Could you imagine if I lose my whole life? What am I going to do? I'm going to say I lost to the worst candidate in the history of politics. I'm not going to feel so good. Maybe I'll have to leave the country. I don't know. If I lose, can you imagine? If I lose, what do I do? Nice trucks. You think I could hop into one of them and drive it away? I'd love to do it. Just drive the hell out of here. Just get the hell out of this. How the hell do you lose to a guy like this? Whenever I say anything that even uses the word losing, the fake news said, he is thinking about losing. This is a big story. President Trump thinks he's going to lose. No, I don't. With me now is a man who knows President Trump pretty well, Anthony Scaramucci, former White House communications director and founder and co-managing partner of Skybridge Capital. And Anthony there, I feel like every once in a while the rallies are where he puts himself on the couch, uh, and you do hear him muse, and, and, and some of these asides, I think, are, are real thoughts here. Um, but the fact that he's talking about it is, I think, his, well, you know him well. I feel like it's his way as he's figuring out how to work through all of this. Well, Chuck, I, I got to push back a little bit because let's say he had 40,000 people at the rallies and they were all psychiatrists. It just wouldn't be enough. You know, he would need the Rose Bowl. <laughs> Uh, size of All psychiatry, right. <laughs> you know, but I mean, listen, the guy, the guy always channels. He's always giving you a tell. Uh, the tell is you're not going to hear from him again. The tell is he may disappear for a while. Uh, you know, when he thought he was losing last time, he was getting ready to go to Scotland uh, to p play at his golf course. Uh, and so we'll have to see what he does, but he's going to lose. I mean, if you just look at the magnitude of the data, I say that as a capital manager and not somebody that's biased. I'm just looking at the data. 25 million additional uh, voters coming into this. Mm -hmm. It's a staggering number. And uh, you know how registration works in the country. The minority registrants are the Republicans. There's more independents and Democrats. Mm -hmm. And the Democrats know that they're dragging independents with them. And so he's going to lose. He knows he's going to lose. And I think he's just trying to figure out if there's one Hail Mary strike on that map that he's looking at. But it's just a very different race from 2016 which is why he's mm -hmm. doing that self-therapy at those rallies. Look, he's, you know, for what it's worth, he's in the right region to try to find his Hail Mary. I mean, the only, the only path he has is if he somehow recreates what he did in the Midwest four years ago. Um, but let me ask you this, Anthony. What do you, th how will he handle this in public if he is the losing presidential candidate? You think he's going to invite Joe Biden to the White House? You think we're going to see the the two, a president-elect Biden and a President Trump sitting next to each other on the big yellow chairs there? Yes, I, I absolutely 100 percent think that. I know I'm the contrarian on this, but just remember something about the president. Yeah. When he does a news search, he's searching T-R-U-M-P. He's not searching USA. He's definitely not searching <laughs> Y-O-U. He could care less about Y-O-U. And so that is 100 percent in his best interest yeah. uh, to do that because he's got investigations going on in New York, New York City, possible investigation at SDNY. And he's going to need the vice president's help as president-elect. And so I predict all of that smoke and bluster about not accepting a peaceful transfer and all that stuff is going to go by the wayside. He'll be remarkably conciliatory and out of character Chuck, because it's in his yeah. self-interest to do so. He's going to need to cut a deal with the Biden administration at some point uh, in the next two years. Mm -hmm. Well, you do get at something that, you know, when I've been asked the same question, I always say, well, you have to start with self-interest. What is his self-interest in that moment? Um, you're assuming his self-interest is protecting himself legally. Um, what if there's a political self-interest? I mean, you know, I remind people, um, people ask me, well, what's going to happen to Trump after he, after if he loses? And I'm like, well, he may run for president again. And they're like, what? And I'm sitting there going, why wouldn't he? Well, there's no there's no chance. First of all, this is a personality cult that is about to dematerialize. And just like the Night King went down in the Game of Thrones, all the zombies are going to disappear from the situation. And there'll be new leadership. The Republican Party will have to have a reckoning. Hopefully there'll be a soul searching in the Republican Party and they'll find leaders that will expand the tent 
as opposed to close down the tent like President Trump. This is his last. You're guess. awfully He's optimistic. You're optimistic, awfully optimistic about, about the about Republican that. Party or the Trump defeat. Yeah, what, that they what will am I some. Optimistic about? Well, no, you're awfully optimistic that if Trump loses, that somehow there's going to be this boy, and you know, you and Mitt Romney are going to lead the Republicans and say, "Hey, no, be a no, different no, no, party. no, 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 no." Yeah, it's not going to be me. It's not going to be me or Mitt Romney. I'm not suggesting that. that no, I that know, but style. you get my point. Yeah, I, I understand the point. That style of Republicanism is also over, but you're not going to take the Republican Party into an aging white demographic that buys my pillows and catheters from Fox News commercial interruptions. That's not going to work for the Republicans. They'll be a minority party mm -hmm. for a generation if they do that. They have to expand the tent of the party. They have to bring in newer, younger leadership. Maybe there'll be elements of populism to that narrative, but it's got to be a way bigger, way broader tent. You can't go deeper that Mr. Trump has gone with that base. It's just not a successful strategy if you want to compete. Now, they've been successful through gerrymandering and so forth of running the country as a minority party, but I don't think they can do that demographically in the next two presidential cycles. Um, look, you, uh, you run a big capital fund. You, you uh, as you said, you, you, look, you look at these things. You may have personal opinions, but you're also looking at these things uh, essentially as a capitalist, as an investor. The next six months on this economy, what happens to it, um, and does it really depend on, who's, on, on who wins the presidency? So again, I want to be very objective. Uh, I, I don't necessarily think it's over the next six months will change much who wins. It would really be over the next three years. And go, don't go by me. Look at the J.P. Morgan study, the Moody study, the Goldman Sachs study. All three of those companies, their economic teams have said that the Biden economic plan is better for the economy. Moody's is even saying it's plus seven and a half million jobs. Uh, for me, though, I'm, I'm just going to be very objective. Either one will be okay, primarily, Chuck, because of the Federal Reserve, and those policies will be unchanged. Think mm -hmm. about 2009 and 10 in the aftermath of the global financial crisis. The Federal Reserve was toggled down to zero interest rates. That's what we're doing right now. And so, therefore, that's what markets and the economy really care about. I do hope, though, that we get a stimulus. Whoever wins this race, I predict it will be Vice President mm -hmm. Biden. But I hope we get a massive stimulus for lower and middle income people uh, because it's sorely needed right now. Well, there's no doubt it's almost a, 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 a absolutely necessary. And I think on that score, perhaps once the election passes, um, cooler heads will prevail on that. Anthony Scaramucci, uh, it's always uh, great to get your perspective. Thank you for offering it to us. We if you didn't love the Rose Bowl analogy, though, I got to work on my analogies for next uh, time we see. That's all right. It's not about, but you know, we got to socially distant. The governor of California wouldn't allow it. There's just so many complications. A lot of regulation there. Needs a lot. Yeah. Needs a lot of help, though. <laughs> that you're talking heavy volume. Yeah, there. Well, I, I hear you. Fair enough. Thank you, Anthony. We are.